you, Fred. Say hello. Look at the whole gang here. Good girl. Good gang. <laughs> That's a good so, man right there. This is gang gang. What is up, you guys? We are back today with another video. And this one has been a little bit in the making. We wanted to introduce you guys officially to Mochi right here. This is Mochi. He's full of energy right now. And He's probably not gonna sit for this video. Yeah. Like that. If Lucifer's here, Mochi should come over. Because Mochi is absolutely in love with Lucifer. And Lucifer oh, loves me. Not. Ain't that right? Lucifer loves his pops. So, anyways, guys. <clears throat> As you guys have seen, I'm sure, Lucifer has been in my videos. You might have seen Mochi in one of the videos he just jumped on my lap while I was doing, while I was recording. But basically, we wanted to share with you guys how he manifested Mochi. <laughs> so he is a long-haired Siamese, and this all came about originally because we were talking about animals. We are talking about which animals we like, and we were walking outside the neighborhood one day and there was this lady who was like breeding huskies and they were beautiful dogs these mm -hmm. huskies and i love huskies huskies are absolutely my favorite breed of dog so, so we were out there kind of playing with them and petting with them and it came up Devin. she has a dog named sadie she's getting older lucifer is younger and she was talking about how she wants to get a companion for Lucifer. Dogs and cats, they can get along, but to increase the overall happiness of cats, it is good to have them in a bonded pair. It makes them so happy. While Alex was um, away and we were traveling, I was working long hours. I felt terrible. I couldn't come home and walk Sadie. And so I just figured it was the best move for my dog that I take her to my parents' house for a while um, so that she can have free reign. They have a backyard, they have a doggy door. A much preferred situation for a dog. And even though I love her, I know what is like, that is the most best for her. So Lucifer was alone. And we had been talking about getting a cat. We were on the walk to see the Huskies. I was talking about how I love the Husky mm -hmm. and how much, how beautiful they are, and how much I like them, but that I wouldn't ever get a Husky, especially not in Arizona and especially with a small mm -hmm. apartment. And they're also just too much work like dogs. You need to walk them multiple times a day. Like if you don't have a dog door, like she said, they, they are stuck inside all day. And if you're traveling, it's just, it is way more inconvenient. So when we, when we were away, we had a cat sitter come to visit Lucifer. And that worked out fine. Obviously, he definitely missed our presence and mm -hmm. he missed human interaction. He's a very affectionate, social cat. So he definitely missed us, but he was still fine being gone for, you know, over a week, as long as there's somebody to come through and check on him. So that's what sparked this conversation because Devin was like, oh, well, I've always really liked this Balinese breed of cat. And I had never seen this breed, or at least I had never paid attention to it. So when we started looking at the pictures of him, I was like, wow, that is really a beautiful breed of cat. Like the dark face with the bright blue eyes, the lighter fur. And so that is how we got conversating about the Balinese breed and about like Siamese's in general. You were in the middle of saying a part of the story. Like, oh, when we went to Indiana, we met that cat. Oh, when we went to Indiana, his family has a farm. I didn't know this, but it's a common thing. Cats, stray cats will find farms or barns and just post up in them and they're called barn cats. This cat in particular wasn't, he was too social to be a barn cat and he adopted himself in his family Mochi. friends car and we went over we visited the cat the sweetest cat so affectionate so social and yeah. we we're considering even taking him home with us because she's like a family friend of ours and she works at the farm too like she'll like take care of the dogs and the goats and all the animals and chickens and everything there and she honestly even told us she was like hey if you guys want this cat <laughs> this cat I had to take him home. She said her husband like hates all the animals that are over there anyway. She's got a ferret running around there. There's other cats in there. It was honestly like a lot of animals at her house. Didn't they even Can, have like a dog 
dog or something. Yeah, especially considering that her husband <laughs> hates animals. And the ferret was like burrowing himself into the back of the couch, like undoing the upholstery and stuff. So there was a lot going on there, but we went over there, we met him. He was so social, so friendly, and he reminded us of Lucifer. And that's when we got to talking about how, yeah, like we could maybe even potentially take him. Unfortunately, her daughter, ended up claiming the cat, like naming him and claiming him. So that didn't end, end up happening, but that's again, how the conversation got back talking about getting a cat. So at that point, she was very confident that she wanted to actually make this happen and get a cat after meeting that one. And after like that kind of feeling of like, oh, we could get this cat. And then it kind of- the, And the, the hope. The hope of it. And then the opportunity kind of got like pulled away. So she was like, okay, we need to do this. And so then she started looking up every single day, every night, she, we found a, uh, an Arizona Siamese rescue website. And there was one in California too. We were checking that. We, she was checking Craigslist every day and every night. And we found a couple cats on there that we actually liked. And we reached out to some people about. People were like, oh, send us this much money and we'll secure the cat for you until you can come and look at it or adopt it. Just clear scams, charging about one can up for kittens without any papers and just like just very shady stuff and mochi alex had said 500 is going to be our budget on this and everyone i think before that the cheapest was 800 and this breeder called cyan moon we had reached out to them be like hey is there any way you can work with us she said no but she clearly cared about cats care about animals and she referred us to this rescue we kept looking at the rescue every day, every night on my lunch break, I was pulling it up. I was looking at all the cats posted until I had found Mochi's litter and I sent it to, to him. I was actually on the phone and I'm like, I'm sending you this link, call the people, text them saying that we're interested. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to send an email just so that we can secure this cat. And so many times we had almost gotten gotten a cat it had, we had almost been able to meet up with them we had picked out the name mochi for one that we're so close to getting we just kept telling ourselves mochi's out there mochi's out there <laughs> and um we fell in love with this one cat in his litter that's actually not him i was like he's cute let's look at the litter though the people they were about two hours away and they kept saying oh we can drop the cat off for you and although it sounded very convenient i just felt like we had to see the cats we had had a vision for not just what he looked like but his personality too and i wanted to make sure that we were getting that yeah so to add on to that we we saw his brother it ended up being his brother we were like, that's our cat. And that night there was like flash flood warning. We it didn't, didn't get that it until didn't, after. Yeah, it, honestly, it didn't look that bad. It was like 50% chance of rain, but it's just been weird for us. Every time we take a trip, there's like some crazy weather stuff going on. So to add to the weird bridge of incidents that led into this occurring in the way that it did was we decided to go. She got her window wipers replaced, thankfully, because this was literally like some of the worst weather I've driven in in a long time. Like the rain was so bad that there was almost no visibility. At a certain point, driving through Arizona, I've never seen this much fog, but it was literally to the point where, you know, the the dotted lines on the, on the lanes on the highways, it's like you could only see like one or two of those dotted things ahead of you. It was like- He literally had to have his GPS up and the map up and say, okay, it's going to be like a curve to the left or yeah. to the right up here. Yeah, it was absolutely Because I couldn't see anything. I've never seen, I've never seen fog that intense. And we were joking about how it was like, we were in Niflheim or the gates of hell or something because it was so unreal, really otherworldly. It didn't feel it like real like life. It, it felt like a video game or something. It was also just really, really windy roads on a mountain, like on the edge of a cliff. Not only was the visibility that bad, I have a sensitive stomach too. So, and I have to like look at the phone too to direct us through this GPS that's winding. It was absolutely nuts. So Two hours of this, but as soon as we got there, it was a complete ghost town. No one was outside. No one was driving on the roads. And there were plenty of people going up, but whenever we got there, whenever we got to the other side of the fog, it was no one. And they told us to meet them at the most run down, sort of standalone gas station. gas station. 
And as soon as we pull up and we park and we told them that we we're gonna be there right on time. We get there and just hail starts pouring down. <laughs> And we're just like, you know what? Of course. Like, of course this is going to happen. Yeah. Hail. When is it hail in Arizona in March? Especially in this part of Arizona, there's usually no snow here. Not even much rain here usually. So that was another thing where we just, we laughed. Like we talked about in our recent video, we just had to laugh. I said something like, yeah, nature. What yeah, I say? Like, what, 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 give us all you got. Give us Let all you got. Out. That type of thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> Who heard so anyways, yeah. Yeah, so as soon as, so we wait there at the gas station. Finally, she arrives with these two kittens in the box. And we, we're meeting the kittens. It's so kind of surreal to see these kittens for the first time, especially since we've been imagining. And I haven't seen really any Siamese in real life. Or maybe I have when I was a kid, but not that I remember. Not since I've been paying attention to what they look like and to the breed. So, and she hadn't even ever seen them. So they're coming out of the box. They're just kind of crying, yelping because it's raining. It's cold out and... They're confused. They, she said that they're eight weeks old. They were le like way less than that, probably just under five. Yeah, like four their, and a half. Their eyes couldn't see or focus on anything. So they mm -hmm. just had no idea what was going on. Yeah. And so we pick them both up and they just like sink their claws into us. It was like really hard to take them off of us once we picked them up. But after handling them, it was very apparent that his brother was just very, very scared. Like he had this look on his face that was, I don't know. Very withdrawn. Very scared of everything, like the environment, um, what was going on, almost like shying away from the experience, like just an completely withdrawing from, yeah, an antisocial, just like not wanting anything. Whereas he was like yelping, but he was still very curious. He had these big alert eyes that were very curious about what was going on. He coming up to the end of the box, like trying yeah. to come up, get out, be held, was just very more extroverted and yeah. more like gregarious and social, like Lucifer. And so we were drawn to him. And even though I liked the short hair, I feel like they look really nice. I also think the long hair looked nice too. But after looking at a lot of the pictures, I was especially their dad, the cat who sired him and his litter is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous cat. So I was leaning more towards the short hair, but as soon as we realized this and like the personality thing, and she said, I think we should get him. I was like, okay, let's do it. And so we ended up taking him back with us. It was a, a loud car ride. There is no rain. <laughs> yeah, so as, as we as we go back, they, say, they give us a warning, weather alerts on the phones. It said life threatening. That's like do not <laughs> yeah do not drive unless leaving the scene of a flood or whatever and it was like life-threatening weather do, do not leave your house so yeah that's what we drove through to get there to get him it's funny that how much energy he had at the beginning of this video and he wouldn't sit still and now he's just like laying on he's us like straight posted. he's just like i want to like push him up here though so that they can see him like see his face and see yeah he's he usually will like the reason I keep putting him here is because he'll usually like sit on here like a hammock and he really likes that actually. But we brought out a different blanket so maybe he's just not used to it or something. But anyways guys, we wanted to share with you like the story of Mochi. There was a lot of, over the months since we first started talking about these types of cats, there was just a lot of different things that kind of led us to, you know, having him now. And watching him grow up, he's, he's about eight weeks now because we got him about three and a half weeks ago mm -hmm. and he's just growing so fast i mean it's almost symbolic like if you think about it all of our energy all of our efforts that we put into this manifesting envisioning what we want and not giving up even driving through hell for our vision and our goal i guess you can say like you can apply it to other things but going through like so much hardships, danger, life threatening. It's so worth it getting whatever you get to the end of your goal and getting what you want. And I guess that's, this is just like a very, very literal interpretation of that. Yeah, there were, cause there were other cats since she was just adamant about getting a cat and she wanted to get one soon that she was looking at and was like, hey, should we pick this one up, this one up? I mean, they were all cute, but they weren't what we had been imagining in our minds the whole time. And 
this cat is exactly what we had been envisioning since the beginning. So it's really cool how it worked out like that. And he really is not only physically, but also personality wise, the exact type of cat that we wanted and envisioned. And also down to the fact that him and Lucifer just got along perfect. Like as soon as we brought him home and let him out of the cat carrier, Lucifer like went in there to sniff him out. And then they immediately just had a, a connection and had a bond. And it's, you usually hear about cats, they take a long time or they take a while. It depends on the situation, obviously. And since he was so young, that... Lucifer just immediately began mothering him. Yeah, Lucifer just started taking care of him. like, And so it just really worked out perfect. So the last thing that we wanted to say about this too is his name, Mochi. I know <clears throat> I put that poll up, if you guys saw, voting on his name. And it was funny because another thing that we did, and maybe this contributed to this as well, is we had this lighthearted thing where she was calling him Toast or the cat Toast. She was like, Toast, Toasty, because he looks like Toast. You know, his paws are like, have like the burnt edges, I guess. And then like his fur is also gonna get more dark, more tan. So he's gonna look kind of reminiscent of that. And then we were thinking of other names that we could name him potentially or her, because at the time we actually were looking at a female one and we came up, we talked about a lot of different names, but we came up with the name Mochi. And I think it really, really is interesting too that we came up with that name because we also imagined this, this exact pattern, which is the seal point pattern. It's like dark on the face, light on the outside, dark on the ears. And the thing about it with the name Mochi is that if you go to the store, you get like chocolate mochi ice cream or coffee mochi or any of those darker flavors. And we literally saw this in Costco and I can even leave a picture of it right here for you guys if you want. We, she even drew like his face around it, but it literally looks like his fur pattern because you've got the dark center in the middle and then the mochi dough outside and like the rice, rice ball or whatever it's made out of. And so, and that's more like a cream color. And so that matches his, his fur completely. And especially over time, like as his fur darkens, it will really, really be symbolic of the way he looks. <laughs> Mochi. Mochi, you want to say goodbye to the people? They all want to see you. Yeah, well, they see what's at up one point, you. also make a little collage video of him growing up so you can see how big he got and how fast. Say goodbye to all your friends, Mochi. Mochi. <laughs> That's a good boy. Yeah, because we also, I have like pictures that I took of him even like a week ago or two weeks ago, and he looks so much bigger now. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. <clears throat> this was more of a kind of like a sharing. Show and tell. Show and tell. We wanted to show you guys Mochi, introduce him to you guys. The newest family member. And you're definitely gonna be seeing more of him in upcoming videos. And with that being said, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this little story that we had to share about how we manifested Mochi, Mochifer, and he's learning quickly from his brother because that man dropped a big old stank of fur off in the pan <laughs> just now. So we had to light some candles. But anyways, guys, drop us a like, leave us a comment, hit me with a subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video. Hey. You're doing so good. Come here, Mochi. What are you doing? Mochi, a.k.a. Flying Squirrel. He's camera shy. Flying squirrel, kangaroo, rat. Monkey. Monkey. Koala. Bear. Bear. Mochifer. <laughs> Motivation. Mochi, what's this? Mochi. He looks like an Ewok.